This is a familiar sight to many in Bangalore. Girish Karnad sets out on his morning walk. Karnad has traversed many paths as actor, director, thinker and administrator, leaving his unique footprint in many fields. His most significant contribution has been to theatre. Karnad is ranked among the greatest playwrights in Indian literary history. It was only when I was 16 that I realised a very important thing about my family, which was that my mother was a child widow and that she had a son and that she had become a nurse and met my father and got remarried again and that we were children of her second marriage. But we were always brought up to believe that our eldest brother, Bhalchan, was a sibling. We were never told that he was a half-brother. My mother had a very strong influence on me, um, on all of us, for two reasons. One thing, because she had struggled, she was very liberal, sexually. Uh, liberal in, in the way she helped widows, the way she uh, brought up uh, women. Uh, I remember that when I was about 35 and so on, a, p a woman who was a cook in our house, who was a cook in our house, uh, wrote me a love letter saying, you know, I love you, you know, what can I do and so on and so on. So I put it in my drawer and went away to shoot and when I came back there was no letter. So I said to my mother, you know, there was a letter, I had a letter here, I had put it here, it has disappeared, what's to be done? So she said, oh, you mean that letter written by that girl? Yes, at that age, all girls feel like that. Why are you keeping that letter? Are you going to blackmail her? And she tore it up. She said, that was the end of that. She and my father were both great theatre enthusiasts. They had seen in Maharashtra, you know, because my father travelled around Maharashtra, plays by Balgandhar, plays by Kishore Bhole, uh, you know, Marathi theatre. They loved Marathi theatre. Both of them used to see. I uh, see them and I grew up with them telling me how glorious theatre was. My father was in government service and uh, he retired in 1942-43 from Pune. But the war was on, so he was given an extension. And there was an extension, he had to go to Sirsi, which was then considered a malarial post. Because Sirsi had no electricity. It was in the backwoods, it was in the jungles. And one used to see Yakshagana or one used to see company nataks and occasionally a film. But otherwise, the only entertainment was stories. You know, it was a world full of stories. And I learnt all my Puranas, all my Itihasa from those few years in Sirsi. Whatever I learnt about theatre, I imbibed from the Havya community, I think. From being with them, from doing plays with them, from acting with them, seeing, uh, going to Yakshagana with them, the whole lot. This is Sarasutpur. My father, when he came to Dharwar in 1952, he came and took a house here. And since then, I've had a very close connection with Sarasutpur. When we came here in 1952, there were 51 Saraswat houses with Saraswat families and 51 outhouses with Saraswat families. So this whole area was a kind of prosperous Saraswat ghetto. The Saraswats were and are an educated community. Uh, which was fortunate for me and they believed, although they all worked under the British, they believed that India should have independence, that Indians should lead themselves and that there was need for social reform. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi came here for instance, he lived in this house. I own this house today but um, you know and I'm very proud that Mahatma Gandhi slept in one of the rooms here. Dr. Ambedkar came here and he was, he stayed in another house, that kind of stuff. And Dharwaz was considered the cultural capital of North Karnataka. This is the Basel Mission School. I was a student here for two years after I came to Harvard. And from here I went on to Karnataka College. A great school. There are a lot of buildings here now, inevitably. I mean, houses are being built. You can see there that a lot of new houses have come. But when I used to come here in 1957, that was exactly 50 years ago, there was nothing here except the Someshwar Temple and the tank. Unforgettable moments in my life. This is the Someshwara temple. I mean, it's quite old actually, and people believe that it was built by Jakhanachari, which shows how old it is, which means they don't know who built it. And this is the temple tank. I learned my swimming here. I used to come here at 5.36 in the morning, often without telling my father, who, who used to be very worried. Bendre has a famous poem, Bantanna Sanna Samara. 
ಬಂತಣ್ಣ ಸಣ್ಣ ಸೋಮಾರ ಕಾಣಬೇಕಣ್ಣ ಸೋಮೇಶ್ವರ ದ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಣ್ಣ ಸೋಮಾರ ಇಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಸಿ ಸೋಮೇಶ್ವರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸೋಮೇಶ್ವರ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ to anyone interested in literature whether he was a resident of dharwar or a visitor to dharwar a visit to bendre's house was a must in those days of course no one took any appointment we just turned up and bendre never minded it bendre has a poem baro sadana kerige come to sadan kerige that was the area in which he lived and he welcomed us then he would come and he would talk to us for half an hour 45 minutes um and at the end of it he would call his son and he would say bara sakretaro bala would bring sugar we would be given sugar which was a sign of saying goodbye and then we would go back feeling utterly rejuvenated by this exposure to bendre's genius this is karnataka college i was here for four years from 1954 to 1958 i did my ba here with mathematics for all those four years i had professor vk gokak as the principal he was a marvelous principal a marvelous teacher so to be here was really an intellectual honor a pleasure in those days it was considered fashionable among students of the college to indulge in literary creativity you know to write poems to write essays to write uh, short stories and so on it may be that people like uh, vk gokak themselves were writers and therefore inspired the people but among those who are with me the person who influenced my life most was kirtinath kurtkote he was much older than me i was about 18 and he was about 30 uh, the uh, reason was that he had not been unable to continue his education after he did his ba he did his ba at about 20 then he taught in gadag because he had no money and he came to dharwar when he was around 28 uh, and stayed with gb joshi and continued his education and this was the one great advantage i had through him i got to know gb joshi i got to enter manohar granth mala which was a great uh, honor in those days this is subhash road and in dharwar when i was young um, marathi was used as much as kannada i mean it had the same kind of currency and uh, we spoke both the languages in the uh, marketplace here actually and subhash road was the road where everyone came for a walk in the evening particularly college students the boys came and the girls came and we all walked pretending not to look at each other but of course looking at each other most important to me the most important point in subhash road was manohar granth mala here they were my publishers they made me the writer that i am today yank yank krishnamurthy who was the editor of prajavani and then the editor of uh, kannada prabha used to say that manohar granth mala taught kannada readers to read kannada literature in the 1930s when there was hardly any kannada literature manohar granth mala took the lead in publishing good literature they created whole body of uh, readers for kannada literature and published uh, writers like anna kru like gokak you know and made modern literature possible you see manohar granth mala was my other home in dharwar one home was my own home where my parents were there but i always used to come so that i could spend time here with kirti and gb because i learnt my language here i learnt my literature here i learnt about sanskrit drama here i mean the amount i have learnt is quite extraordinary kirti's uh, uh, conversation was like a machine gun fire you know bright ideas used to keep on coming from all directions and if you are there you try quickly to grab an idea see what you could do with it another man whom i met here was ak ramanujan who would come here then there were people like shankar mukashi punekar and bendre used to come here and I- this was a great crucible for ideas uh, a very exciting place to be in and i benefited enormously from it i did my ba here with mathematics actually i had no love for mathematics in fact i hated the subject but then i was dying to go abroad in fact in that generation everyone wanted to go abroad probably they still do and there was no way my father could send me because he didn't have that means to do so so to go abroad i had to get a scholarship to get a scholarship i had to get a first class and i decided that by taking kannada or history or english i could not make sure that i would get a first class the only way i could make absolutely sure that i would get a first class was by studying mathematics so i took mathematics i got my first class i stood first to the university and i got the road scholarship so in a way my uh, the idea of taking mathematics bore fruit but now when i look back i think it was a very good idea because mathematics taught me a discipline 
Mathematics gives you a rigor. It lets you think of various factors in a very logical fashion. And if you want to be a playwright, that kind of training is immensely useful. But if I took the Rhodes Scholarship in those days, you know, you, you couldn't fly. You had to take a ship. I had to go by three weeks. My, my father didn't have enough money to pay me back, so I would come back after three years. So there was chaos at home. Will he stay there? Will he marry a white woman? And so on and so on. And the parents were demanding, no, you come back, you come back to India. And I felt these people are making demands on me. All that seemed suddenly coming to life in the story of Yayati and his demands on Puru. You know, you sacrifice your youth for me and so on. And suddenly the whole thing poured out as a play. <laughs> It surprised me completely for one thing because I didn't know that I, I was so closely related to our myths, although I was because of Sirsi, thanks to Sirsi to the imbibed in me. That I didn't know. Secondly, I wanted to be an English poet. I wanted to go abroad and be with T.S. Eliot and Auden and so on, you know, win the Nobel Prize, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and the third thing is I wanted to be a poet, not a playwright. And suddenly this play just poured out like that. It was pouring out. I was writing it down in Kannada. And uh, I was like a stenotypist. <laughs> Before leaving for England, I went to Manohar Ganthamala and I gave him Mano, uh, the G.B. Joshi, the play. And I said, here I have a play, can you read it and let me know? And he, of course, gracious in a play, said, I'll take it home, read it. After four or five days, I came back and said, have you read it? And he returned it to me and said, yes, I've read it, you know, that Adasya uh, monologue, that uh, maid's monologue in the last act, that's very touching, he said. That's it. That was the comment on the whole play. Now the Dossi's monologue is a corner, in the corner of the play, not the main theme at all. So I assumed that, well, that's it. That's the end of the matter. My playwriting ends. So I went for, uh, I left for England. In Oxford, there's no other world. What happens outside doesn't matter. You are a student and that is it. Um, you react to each other. You meet writers uh, who are potential writers, politicians who are potential politicians. I really enjoyed those three years enormously. And of course, the Oxford Union, the fact I became a president of the Oxford Union, it took some trouble, was a, a great experience because the Oxford Union is open to London, Parliament, you politicians come, people like Randolph Churchill, people like Sir Cyril Connolly, people like Richard Crossman, they all came, spoke, and I got to know them. And um, I, I got to know how the whole, how India is seen by outside politicians, by intellectuals and so on. When I was at Oxford, in my first term sometime, I got a letter from uh, Kirtinath Kutkuti. And he said, I've just talked to G.B. Joshi. G.B. Joshi says, he, he read your play and he told me what you've done with it. And I think it's very exciting, the possibilities. So please send me the script. But he also made a, a clause. He said, you know, I hope you are not like Eugene O'Neill. Eugene O'Neill uses all these myths for Freudian purposes. And I said, oh my God, because I was very influenced by Eugene O'Neill also. I loved him. So anyway, I rewrote the Ayati, sent it to Manohar Gansamala. I got a letter saying, we like it, we'll publish it. It was published and, you know, then once it was published, it got all kinds of response. It got very good response. I knew at that moment when Ayati got published that I was coming back. I was not staying in England anymore. I didn't want to be an English poet. I wanted to be in Canada. While writing on drama, Kirtinath Kurkoti in one place said that we don't have any place which treat history as contemporary. And I said, why not? Why not? I mean, you know, I needed a subject and I didn't. So I said, let me write a historical subject. Took out a book of history and started with Mohenjo-daro and read the history book, right down. Mohenjo-daro, the Guptas and Mauryas and, you know, right down. And level. when I came to 13th century, I came across the story of Tughlaq. And I said, this is it, marvelous, I found the subject. Again, with Tughlaq, it was not just that he was a mad king, a person who took uh, 
the capital from Delhi to the Alatabad, but he was a king who banned public prayer in his kingdom for five years. Now, think of a sultan banning public prayers. He was going against the Holy Quran. He was going against his priests. Why should he have done it? <laughs> So, when I was going to Oxford, I was writing Yeyati. On the way back from Oxford, I was writing Tughlaq. So, I had the first draft ready as I reached uh, uh, Bombay. This Tughlaq turned me into a kind of all India figure. It was done in Bombay by Alec Padamsi, it was done by Al Qazi there, it was done in Marathi by Arvind Deshpande, it was done in Bengali by Shambhu Mitra. Mention it, I mean, you know, here by Simha. I must uh, say that many, many things in my place came from these casual conversations. You know, one day Karanth and I were sitting and I was telling him the story of transposed heads, Thomas Mann's uh, story, and said, this will make a marvelous uh, film, heads changing and so on. He said, film masks use And I said, quite right, he's just right. So I wrote Hayavadana. Ramanujan arranged for me to come to Chicago as a Fulbright scholar. At that time, there was also a condition that I should write a play, a fresh play, for the students of Chicago University, English department. And then Ramanujan told me the story of uh, uh, two stories he told me. One which I turned into a film called um, uh, Chelvi. And then he told me the story of Nagamandala. And I wrote it out. I just wrote it for the undergraduates. But this is what I mean. A, a play, writing a play is like having a child, you know. You can say this is f the future I want for it. But they don't listen to you. They just go off on their own. Nagamandala has become a hugely successful play. When you're building a house, you say this is where the kitchen will come, this is where the gate will come, this is where the main road is, this is where the dust will come and so on. A play has to be planned like that. I work chip and chisel uh, because I think in a, uh, on stage, a little look like that can uh, suggest so much. The play that I really wanted to write, which I worked on uh, at Chicago, did a lot of work, was Taladanda and um, uh, Agni Matmalai. You know, because there, there were all these sociologists, professors. You could discuss with them, Taladanda, what happened in Taladanda, what was the caste system. At that time, the Mandir and Masjid, I think, was taking place here. You know, on one side, the Mandir people saying, Hinduism is one and we must be saved. And the Masjid, you know, the Masjid episode, uh, Babri Masjid, and also the, uh, you know, the Mandal Commission report, all that was happening. What is Hinduism, what's not Hinduism? And I felt, God, we have not changed at all. We have remained the same for the last 1,000 years. Because these are the issues that Baswana handled. What will the John Company gain in land and gold and silver by harming my sons? There is no danger of that. Danger is, they will teach my children their language, English. A language in which it is possible to consider boys of seven and eight as hostages of war. Well, I directed one play of mine, only one, and that's the vertical member. And that is because I thought if I didn't direct it, no one will know what the form is. You know, there's an image and there's a real person, and the real person talks to the image. And everyone said, image? What image? Some other actress will come there. I said, no, 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 no. It has to be an image. So ultimately, me and Chaitanya and we all sat together and, you know, shot the... We did it. In 1969, Kaharnad wrote the screenplay 
of Samskara based on a novel by U R Anand Murthy yet another prominent Kannada writer Karnad even donned the lead role in the film it was his first foray into the world of cinema Vamsha Vruksha was his debut as the film director along with B V Karanth Since then he has directed some of the most memorable films in Kannada including Kadu Vanda Nondu Kaladalli Tabbal Yu Nina De Magane and Kanuru Hegatti Working alongside filmmakers like Satyajit Ray Sham Benigal and Govind Nihalani Girish Karnan made his presence felt in the Hindi film industry as well Ah aap kon hai He has directed films in Hindi like Utsav, Chelavi and Voghar. Most importantly, some of the most reputed talents in Indian cinema first entered films under Girish Karnad. The Kannada superstar Vishnu Vardhan made his debut in Girish Karnad's Vamshavruksha. You idiot. Matte no, avargu kalli rakbe ka? Karnad even introduced the immensely talented actor director Shankar Nag in the film Vanda Nondu Kaladalli. Actors Amrish Puri, Om Puri, Shekhar Suman, Sonali Kulkarni, cinematographer Rajiv Menon, art director Sabu Siral all first entered cinema under Karnad's wing. Girish Karnad has also played an important role in shaping the cultural policy of india he has built and nurtured several institutions of repute including the karnataka natak academy the sangeet natak academy the film and television institute of india and the nehru center in london and his contributions have been recognized across india and the world he has been conferred with reputed honors like the kalidas samman Gubbi Veeran Award for Lifetime Achievement in Kannada Theatre, Swarna Kamal, Central Sahitya Academy Award, Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan. Girish Karnad has been conferred with the most important literary honor in India, the Gnan Peet, for his contribution as playwright. Karnad's wife, Saraswati Ganapati, is a doctor and social activist. She works to empower women in rural Karnataka. Karnad has two children, Raghu Amai and Radha Shalmali. Close to the temple Someshwara is the source of the river Shalmali. This is it, Shalmala Nadi, she is called. And when my daughter was born, I said to my wife, why call her after Ganga, Yamuna, Narmada, Saraswati, rivers which are far away? We should call her after a river which is next door to us. And Saraswatpur, where I was brought up, is just next door here. And Someshwara is there. And in the poem, Sanna Swamara, which I quoted while we were in Someshwara, there are these lines of Bendris, which are very famous. Shalmali, Sanna Bali, Kivi Olaga, Tale Wali, Gari Gari, Banada Ga Adagi. गंगा होली सगर बिटू सगर वरटा गोकर्ण कड़गे बूरल दीपमाली नंदी सज्जु साली गुड़ नई मदर वाज एक्सपेक्टिंग मी वेन शी वाज टू मंथ्स प्रेग्नेंट प्रॉब्ली टू और थ्री मंथ्स प्रेग्नेंट शी डिसाइडेड दैट शी डिडंट वांट मी शी डिडंट वांट टू हैव अनादर चाइल्ड शी ऑलरेडी हैड थ्री सो शी पर्सुएडेड माई फादर टू टेक हर टू अ पर्सन टू टू अ डॉक्टर टू हैव अबॉर्शन Uh, uh, a doctor called Dr. Madhumalati Gune, and I think I shall forever be grateful to the, this Dr. Madhumalati Gune because that day Dr. Madhumalati Gune didn't come to her clinic. So my mother waited half a day, and then she got bored, and they came home. Uh, and so my mother said, "We had you; otherwise, we would have got rid of you." And I was so shocked. The whole notion that there would be this world without me—I mean, you know—all uh, blank. I felt completely blank, and my first reaction was to say. But but then you have my younger sister. You had my how can you have my younger sister if you wanted to get rid of me? And my mother said, Oh, by that time I had lost interest, you know, in the whole thing. So we had a younger sister. But I tell you that 
when that revelation came, for about five minutes, the whole notion that the world could exist and I could not be there uh, just completely stunned me. And recently I told this story to my children and they were equally stunned. They said, what, the whole world would have been there and we wouldn't have been there. Uh, so, the point is that it was a traumatic experience when I think I, can, I genuinely experienced the absurdity of life.